Hello, my friends. It's DIYs by Dar, and I am down in the pottery workshop, which I have not been down here for years because I was not feeling well enough to do it. And it is under a little bit of construction because we had some construction upstairs. So now I'm finally getting it back um, into a functional state. So right there is my kiln. And you can see that the cord is cut off. But we are getting that fixed so I can start to use it again. And then back in the corner is a slab roller where you put the clay and you can roll out a beautiful, nice slab of clay that will be your canvas for whatever you're gonna press into it. And down around the corner, there's my wheel, which needs a belt that needs to be fixed. You see, these items are quite old, pushing over 28 years old, but I've always kept really good care of them, so they're still usable for me. And I'm gonna go ahead and just show you real quick, because I took this after. Um, there are some of the pieces that you're going to see me set up and do and some of those pieces with the um, lilacs that I pressed in and these fragments of flowers and whatever I got in there they're gonna burn out because this kiln the first firing goes to 1888 degrees so anything that's in there is gonna burn out so let's get to it I'm going to go over here and I've had an old bucket that has had some clay in it, um, old scraps that I've thrown in there and then I put some water over the top to try to reuse it and I really want to try to reuse some of this clay before I open up any more of my other bags. Now, if you see this god-awful, terrible bruise on my leg as I am working, um, I'm healing slowly, very disappointed I fell, but I think I uh, pretty much fractured a couple vertebrae, nothing you can do, but wear a brace, do PT, which I have my pool, and I do that, try to do that, I hopefully will be back to that tomorrow, um, it'll be a week tomorrow that I fell, I think I probably fractured my jaw again, and just the bruising. Bruising doesn't hurt at all. My back really is bad. So let's go ahead and get this big wad of clay out. You see me moving extremely carefully, which I do anyway. And I'm gonna get some really sticky clay out of here. Okay, I'm going to start to work this clay. I want to try to get as much air out of it as possible. Almost like kneading bread. A little bit, a little bit tougher. Do it in two small batches, so I'll cut half. Save that for a little bit later. All right, the next part is the fun part. To throw it. I think that's good enough and now I'm going to take it over to this 
slab roller. Now, if I tried to tell you where I got this slab roller, the name of it is North Star. And this slab roller, kiln, wheel, they're all 28 years and older. So I don't even know if the companies are there anymore. So I really can't um, leave anything in the um, description for you to follow. All right, let's go. Now I've got this set between a quarter and an eighth. A quarter of an inch is, is just way too much. And I have the clay sitting over here. And I gotta make sure I got enough to start pushing it through. I, um, put the other one up over the top. These are just two big, heavy canvases. I just want to start to feed them through so at least I can grab them. Um, I'm not really liking this new setup. Because this slab roll is going to have to get moved pretty tight to that wall. Okay, got a, a piece on the top, piece on the bottom. I'm going to grab the wheel, start feeding it. And I want to grab both of them together because I want them moving at the same time. And then just crank your stuff through. And there you have a nice beautiful flat piece of clay. So I'm going to take it over back to the workbench. All right, I've got a piece of clay here. And let's go ahead and get it ready for setting up to make some pendants. I can see a couple uh, air bubbles in there already. Try to go and poke them and get them out and get them out and work that clay a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put this lovely t-shirt type material. It doesn't have much texture. And my rolling pin, my old rolling pin. And I've got a really long piece of clay here, so I'm going to have to run it long ways so I can eliminate some lines in it. I don't want to press too hard. I want to press hard enough to smooth it out, but I don't want to make it much thinner than it is. And to get it off, let's kind of pull in the opposite direction. And you can see I still got some texture from this piece of material. But we'll take and um, roll that out in any of those areas where you really have any holes in there. I just won't put anything there. But check the roller. Make sure it don't have any build up on it. And I see a little bit right there. I'm going to go ahead and sand that off. I guess that's in there permanently. It was in there permanently. I thought it was, uh, I don't know. Anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and lightly roll. to get it as flat as I can. Not really pushing down that much, but enough to give me a flat surface. Watch that. Once this thing starts to get sticky, 
and it's not going to go over nice for you. you got to stop, take your time, and just get that off. And I'm using a surf prep medium pad. <laughs> Stole some from my furniture stuff, but hey, a lot of my stuff is interactive here. <laughs> Here sniffing, it's my dog. She's in here, she wants to know what I'm doing. She's like, what? You haven't been down here in years. What are you doing? <clears throat> I cut off the outside. going to be too thin to use. And that'll go back into the bucket. Now maybe I'll cut this in half. I want to I want to release those pieces off. That's when you try to uh, and do your cutters on them if they're really stuck down they don't come off okay, one more time carefully lift it up and down start with this little bunch got some really cute little ones on there right there I don't know if they'll show up Give it a try. And what I want to do is try to crush that flower just a little bit. down like that. I'm a little bit picky. You have to get these things laying just right. I guess that one as good as it's going to get. So I really roll it in. Now I like my design. I have to find a cutter that will accommodate that. One of my bigger ones, that's for sure. Let's see here. Well, I could go round. Nope. Nope. Gotta go round. So I line it up. Thinking where I'm gonna put the hole in the top. Did come up, there it is. So I've gently gotta push it out. That's it, and I'm gonna go set it on top of the kiln so it starts drying a bit. <clears throat> and then uh, when I start to poke holes with my pol my hole pokers, I'll probably put it right there. So that's basically all it is trying to find a little bouquet that just fits right on top of that blank palette of clay, pressing it down and forming it up, and that's the start of the journey. Okay, I, w I wanted to show you a little bit bigger of one. I'm gonna do the uh, Lily of the Valley. So I've got my clay already. And I have a tar paper form that I've cut out and I just am going to lightly 
lightly go over so I know where my perimeters are um, so I don't go out of the lines here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the leaf on. Carefully press it down. And I got two Lily of the Valleys that I'm going to put in there. I'm making a shadow on my, I make it a shadow on my piece. So I can't see what I'm doing. another one that smells really lovely when you make it smell them lily of the valley So I'm ready to go ahead and line this back up. Now it's going to kind of really be stuck. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut out around the outside of it. And then I'll save these little pieces. And this is what I kind of uh, use to make the jewelry out of. these for making some pendants. And this will go back into the bucket. All right. First trick, flip it over. Carefully, carefully. Remove the back. Now, 
You see any spots that need to be squared up? Now we have to turn it over one more time. This is just a plastic, Call it. they call it a bat. It's got holes in it. It goes on top of your wheel. Flip it over again. And we'll see if we can. Pull that off. Well, every piece is handmade, so they're going to look different, but here we go. There. There you have it. Just want to. around and straighten anything up, any imperfections as best you can, but remember, it's still really wet, and then now the trick is going to be making sure that it stays flat and it doesn't warp. There you have it. You can see it's still really pliable. I need to come back and take and let it dry. This one's been sitting here um, for a little bit and it's really nice and starting to become dry, but still once again, you have to keep coming down and you gotta check it, make sure it stays flat. I did uh, put a hole in the top of that one. And I also, um, when I had a little bit of extra clay left, I went ahead and I just made a small little freeform bowl and I put it, I have it on top of what they call a hump mold. I have a lot of hump molds. You can see them all down there lined up. Some of them I made and some of them I purchased. So all it is is just set over the top of that on a little piece of the material and when the time is right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip it over and I'll show you how to make that bottom flat and you'll see what design I have on this one is. Okay, I believe this is probably firm enough to take off and just set it upright. And it's just like a free form and you just kind of press it down a little bit and then that makes the bottom on it and that's all you really need to do when you're making a freeform piece is just that you can wrap it over you can drape it over a, a ball you could drape it over a mold you can put it inside a dish um, you can drape it over some type of dish your imagination on what you want to try to create with it is infinite well that kind of wraps up um, the first part of creating these pieces. You can see I have one here that's still in the wet clay, basically wet mud. And after I put it in my kiln and I fire it for the first time, this is what you're going to end up with. It's just a white bisque and then you have to do the painting. I'm going to go ahead and link my um, first video that I did on actually painting the pottery to this one in case you would like to see what happens after this process. I will get another one on there when I get my kiln up and uh, running so you can see what it's like to open up the kiln door and see all the beautiful surprises inside. Thanks for taking the time to check this uh, video out with me and like and subscribe and I'll get some more out for you.